Hey guys, what's going on? It's Sean of Third Rail Fight, and I hope you're having a beautiful day today. So it's it's been a while. I don't know if I remember where all the buttons are. Coincidentally, that's the same thing my wife says to me. Anyway, <laughs> anyways, I I took uh, I took a few days off there because it's summertime, and you know I I, I have all the kids, and it's chaos. It's like the Battle of Fallujah every day. It's all. <laughs> I don't know where the buttons are. Anyways, so I hope you guys are doing great. I've missed you all. I'm 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 back doing videos, and uh, I'm gonna try and do some more live streams throughout the week, as well as every Saturday or Saturday night off the rails. Um, you know, all that. I'm gonna try and spread the love. But let's talk about the Olympics. The disgusting, awful Olympics. I mean, I grew up loving the Olympics. Every two years. Winter, summer, winter, summer, right? Because they're all f every four years, but they overlap. So it's every two years. You get to enjoy indulging in sports that you, ha that you have never watched before. Javelin. What? Who's watches Javelin? Watching some broad throw herself down the side of a mountain but head first? That's just fantastic television. And I don't care about it until it's the Olympics. Cycling? I couldn't care less about cycling. But it's Olympic cycling. You're like, wow, this is great. This Olympics, I haven't even, I haven't even tuned in. I saw that opening and I was like, oh, buddy. Oh, buddy. An interesting little thing has happened here. So let's let's take a look at this. And as we do, uh, like, subscribe, share. Help me grow this channel. Um, YouTube hates me. They've, I, I am the digital George Floyd. Their knee is on my neck and I can't breathe. I'm not long for this YouTube world. So definitely give me a follow on rumble rumble is where i'll be doing my best growing i think all right live the tiktok she says meet Imain khalif a boxer who was banned from the women's world boxing championships in 2023 why was she banned you ask because she's a man however khalif is being allowed to compete in women's olympic boxing in paris just another reason to boycott these Olympics. So it's a man going to take his aggression out on a woman and smash her face in. Why are people okay with that? So this dude, he's pretty big. He's a pretty, he, like, he's, he's, he's a tall fella. So he's got the reach. He's, the mechanical advantage is already just, out the wazoo. So, footage of transgender boxer who has been allowed to compete in the Olympics, landing brutal shots on a female opponent, has emerged on social media. So, we have found basically, or we have realized, or found out, or whatever, however you you want to phrase it, that this this fella is going to be boxing a a uh, an, an Italian woman. And then so people have looked into this boxer and then realized that the, they've had other matches where he has beaten women into a pulp. And I mean, it, it's like Fallon Fox when Fallon Fox was in the UFC. He was a, he was a she or whatever, but had fists to the size of lunchboxes and broke a woman's orbital bone. Like he was punching right through women's faces. So two boxers who were banned from the world championships for being deemed biologically male have been cleared to compete at the Olympics as women. A row has erupted in Paris after it emerged that Iman Khalif of Algeria and Lin Yu Ting of Taiwan were thrown out of the tournament last year amid questions over their biological sex. IOC bosses said both meet eligibility criteria and will box over the coming days. 
you would think that the eligibility criteria for being in women's boxing would to actually have a box. Apparently not. However, now footage on X has showed uh, Khalif dominating one of her previous opponents has gone viral as fans reacted to the news of her inclusion in the Olympics. A la mexicana Khalif que se está llevando la contienda ahora en las repeticiones, el golpe de impacto. Sí, sí, sí. Se vio claramente de nueva cuenta el like that girl's face is mangled. golpes alcanzó a conectar manejándose con el jab y otra vez like en la combinación is... ahí en el upper otro golpe de impacto le van a aplicar otra cuenta de protección. Cuidado porque Yeah, he uh, he, he he beats her up pretty bad. So the main Khalif will be fighting Angela Carini. The video that we just saw a very brief snippet of uh, showed Khalif landing heavy shots to the head of her Mexican opponent uh, back in December 2022. The caption of the video told fans to note the force of the punching displayed by Khalif as she unloaded on her opponent in a flurry of punches. After the disqualification, Mexico's Tamara came forward with her own experience of fighting Khalif earlier in the tournament. When I fought her, I felt very out of my depth. Maybe that's because you were fighting a man! Not too long ago, there was this biological woman who decided that she, that she was going to be a, a man. And so she did all the things, the surgeries and all that stuff, took all the testosterone and worked out in the gym and actually was a pretty jacked looking man. Um, actually kind of passable. I, I forget her name. I'm sure you can find it. And she, she was a boxer and she, she was going to box a man. As a man, I guess. And she got her ass whooped. She got her ass whooped so bad that the, the boxing league went throughout all of the internet and totally scrubbed it. You can't find. She lost in like two seconds. Because it was such a bad beating. I, just, I don't know why the, the IOC is... No, it's fine. It's fine. Anyway, so... The victim in this fight. Says, when I fought her, I felt very out of my depth, she wrote on X. Her blows hurt me a lot. I don't think I had ever felt like that in my 13 years as a boxer, nor in my sparring with men. Thank God that day I got out of that ring safely, and it's good that they finally realized. This whole thing leads to this story. How many men are pretending to be women so they can steal the women's place on top of the podium? Well, apparently, there's good news and there's bad news. The good news is it's half of the amount that was in Tokyo 2021. It's funny that they still call it Tokyo 2020, but those, those Olympics were delayed one full year. So it was actually Tokyo 2021, but because of, because of the naming scheme, they have to call it 2020. But anyways, I digress. Uh, number of transgender athletes competing at Paris Olympics is halved compared to Tokyo 2020 after major rule change sparked by backlash over unfair advantage in women's events. So yes, the good news is it's half. The bad news is there's still some. Just two transgender athletes will compete at the Paris Olympics after rules were tightened since Tokyo 2020. Daily Mail can reveal. The clampdown came because of the ongoing row over whether some trans women have an unfair advantage over biological women because of strength and testosterone. Many banked up in puberty. <laughs> so you know what's kind of funny, though? Okay, so it's like, <laughs> uh, all right, so 
So it's only it's it's only two transgender athletes. And you're like, oh, really? Just two? That's not many. It might be fine. But they're both in boxing. <laughs> oh, oh, my goodness. That's that's one of the the fighting women is probably the worst place to have them. American runner Nikki Hiltz, 29, and Canadian footballer Quinn, 28, both of whom identify as transgender and non-binary, are in France for the world's greatest festival of sports. But swimmer Leah Thomas is out of the, out of the Olympics after losing a legal battle last month, and New Zealand weightlifter Laurel Hubbard, the first openly transgender athlete to compete at the Olympic Games is also absent. Laurel was one of the four trans athletes at uh, Tokyo 2020. British trans cyclist Emily Bridges had hoped to, to aim for a spot at the Paris Olympics, but after British cycling barred transgender women from competing in the female category in 2023, she says she has given up on competing at the elite level. Hubbard, uh, Bridges, and uh, Thomas all transitioned from male to female after the age of 12, which means they are now ineligible. Nikki Hiltz and Quinn identify as transgender and non-binary, but both were born women and are competing as women, so therefore they are transgenders and nothing affects them because they're just women. God, what a stupid thing that is. Future civilizations are going to look back and go, oh my goodness, the modern man did have a dark age. So I don't even think these two count Nikki Hiltz and, and this Quinn. I mean, they're, they're women. It's the two, it's the two dudes in, in boxing that are going to pummel the shit out of, uh, out of these women's faces. Nikki has post post has postponed testosterone hormone therapy so she could qualify for the women's division of the 1500 meters. So, she's a woman. I mean, it's, it's kind of funny, right? Like, this gender dysphoria is supposed to be, like, the craziest thing ever. Like, it, it will drive you to suicide if you're, not, if you're not on top of it. Allegedly, that's what they say. But this woman was like, oh my god, my gender dysphoria. Well, I better train really, really hard so I can be an athlete and I'm going to put off this medical procedure or what intervention that can save my life, but I'm also going to train for the division that affects my dysphoria even more. It's a lie. The whole thing is a lie. Good Lord. Going to the Olympics is such a dream of mine, they said last year, adding, but it's a, such a dream of mine to take testosterone or grow facial hair or have top surgery. So I think sometimes I can really resent this sport. <laughs> oh, goodness. As somebody with facial hair, I can tell you it's not, it's not always the bee's knees. Heading towards Paris 2024, there has been a seismic shift in the sporting landscape for trans athletes with the pendulum swinging back towards tighter measures, as it should be, because women have fought long and hard for their place in the world, and rightly so. They shouldn't have to fight for it again. Half the number is, is, is what they say compared to Tokyo. There must have been a lot during Tokyo. I don't know. It was the pandemic. I had more important shit going on, if I'm honest. I didn't watch any of the Tokyo stuff. And if the Olympics continue to suck, then I'm never going to watch it again. Like, I remember it was, it was just always on CTV or CBC, and it was just on 24 hours a day, seven days a week, until the thing was over. It was just like a buffet, so you could sit down and watch pickleball and go, oh my god, pickleball's amazing, or whatever nonsense sport it was. But yeah, I don't know. So, we got, we got trans athletes in there, gonna beat up some women. Uh, I hope the women get out safe. Anyways, thank you for watching. And uh, like, subscribe, share, follow on Rumble. That's the most important thing. And I'll catch you guys in the next one. Peace. Peace.